Good morning YouTube. What's going on? I am doing a little bit of wiring this morning. Uh, most of it's actually already done and it's pretty boring. Uh, if you're going to do a van, you've probably got some idea on how to do basic wiring. My electrical system is going to go over here on the passenger side of this van and I have just started right here. I've run all of my wiring up through the van and I've made sure to label both sides of where everything's going. This for instance is for my hot water tank and over on the other side of that cord I've got a corresponding label. Very very important. Uh, with these projects you end up doing a little bit of electrical, a little bit of plumbing, a little bit of carpentry. A little bit of electrical, a little bit of plumbing, a little bit of carpentry. It's just kind of the nature of the beast with these van builds and this will save you a lot of time later on. I cannot stress labeling enough. Anyway, I'll show you where I ran a lot of my stuff. So a lot of it came out there and you know this is just rough in electrical. It'll get, it'll get cleaned up later. Oh, look at what I did here. I can't believe I did that. I've got to fix that. That's got to go through the frame, not on the outside like that, so I'll fix that here in a minute. But I ran a lot of stuff for the driver's side, actually I ran everything through the driver's side. Over here through the top of this frame, and I've got my label here for reading lights. I've got, this is for my fridge, and this is the power for the pump over here. Now the pump is kind of tricky. I want a pump switch over in this area where the kitchen's going to be. So I had to run a wire from where my 12 volt fuse box is going to be up all the way through here and down to where the pump switch. The pump switch is going to be located somewhere in this area. I'm not 100% sure yet. Then we need another line going up back through over here the water system. My pump is going to end up sitting right over here. So I've got that labeled for the water pump. As you're doing your wiring, stuff like that is probably the trickiest bit. The only other thing I can tell you about roughing in your electrical is just draw yourself up a diagram. So I just know I wanted two fans. I've got, you know, roughly where all of my uh, all of my lights are going to be. I'm going to have to run for outlets later, so I've got those in. I don't have the, the wiring diagrammed in here. It's not that much of a diagram, but this is just my electrical layout. And when I go to actually run the wiring, I just make sure that I have everything wired that I've got listed. Um, yeah, that's really the best thing I can say. Well, the electric is all roughed in and there's nothing more I can do on that now. Um, I'm still waiting on my propane tank, but there is some carpentry that I can do. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make my boxes to fit over these wheel wells, and we're gonna use one of my favorite tools today, and that is the pocket hole jig. I am a pocket holeaholic. I love building stuff with pocket holes. It's simple, it's easy, um, and it's fun. So I'm going to show you how we do that. Okay, the first thing I've got to do is get my measurements for these boxes. And I want to measure from the side of the van up to this line. What I've done here is I've just marked a line giving myself a little bit of wiggle room away from the wheel well. That's exactly eight inches. Okay, these wheel wells, they're not square. They come out. So I need to make sure as I am making these boxes that I am well off the forward most part and the rear most part 
um, of the wheel well. So I've made marks here using the straight edge. I just kind of eyeballed it, making sure that I have plenty of room. And this is where the inside of my box is going to sit. So my box will be, I'm using a half inch plywood. My box will be about a half inch off that line bigger. And this is 35 and a quarter. So I've got my dimensions, eight by 35 and a quarter. And then we're gonna see how high this comes up. That's about 18 and a quarter inches. I'm gonna give myself 18 and a half, just to make sure that I'm clear of it. All right, let's get to building. I'm getting ready to make one of my cuts and I have my trusty uh, circular saw crosscut sled set up. Now this is not the best way to do this. Uh, if I were using the circular saw, normally I would be outside set up on saw horses with um, an anchor underneath or something underneath here to catch this as I cut it. Unfortunately it's drizzling out right now and I can't really cut anything outside at the moment. So I'm making do with what I've got. But as always, remember, eye protection and ear protection. Earmuffs and eye muffs. All right, that's one of the cross pieces. Now I've got to set up for the other one. And I just want to stress again, this isn't the best way to do this. And for safety's sake, I've actually got the waist piece of the board clamped down to the outfeed, to my uh, outfeed table so that things don't pop up. There's more weight on this side than on this side, so I've got it clamped down over here to hold it down. Okay, this piece is now a more manageable size, so I can run it through the table saw. I've got all my pieces cut and what I want to do next is mark out where I'm going to put all my pocket holes. Um, I like to go ahead and mark it out first that way as I'm drilling for my pocket holes I can just do it I don't really have to think about it. So with this particular one I'm going to put some pocket holes on one side so they so the pieces can be attached on the inside but then on the um, as I attach them down onto the floor I'm going to need pocket holes on the outside. So this one's gonna get marked both on the inside and the outside. Now some of you out there might say that I'm overbuilding this. And you know what, I may well be, but I figure I would rather take the time and throw a few extra pocket screws into a piece that not only is going to be bearing a lot of weight with the water tank and the batteries, but also needs to be drilled down into the floor. This isn't a house, this is a van, so things are gonna be shifting, things are gonna be moving, and I don't want these boxes to move at all. So if I'm putting too many screws in, I'm okay with that. I'd rather too many than not enough. Hey everybody, it's me, David, from six or seven weeks in the future hence the uh, longer hair and the longer beard. But uh, I'm taking the day off from building, trying to get caught up on some video editing, and I realized as I was trying to knock this video together, I did a really crappy job uh, explaining pocket holes. I really did kind of a crappy job with this whole video, so I'm gonna try and do some different things now to clean this up a little bit. First of all, I want to explain pocket holes, because I didn't do that at all. Pocket holes, when you buy the kit, there's several different kits you can buy. Um, it's basically a jig. It holds wood in place, and then you can drill these holes at an angle using, using the jig and using this bit. Um, you have to decide the length of screw that you're going to use and also how thick your material is, and then you can set the jig up to different heights depending on uh, those factors. You also set your collar on your drill bit to different heights. 
but if you get a kit, read it and it'll really explain that well. Once you drill out your holes, you put your pieces together. If this is, say, the inside of a cabinet carcass or a box, and then they just screw together just like so. Point. But anyway, it's just an easy, quick way to build cabinetry, to build base frames, things like that. So, there's a quick tutorial on pocket screws. Now, on with the build. Yep, looks perfect. Pocket holes. I love them. All right, we've got all three sides on this box. We're just going to put it in for a little test fit, and then we're going to assemble the next one. Need to make sure that our water tank's going to fit in here. Looks like this water tank's going to be a perfect fit. Later on, we're going to drill a couple of holes down in here where these two will fit into. Can't do that just yet, though. Alright, now that I've got these boxes attached and together, I have cut out some supports for the boxes. These boxes are going to hold an enormous amount of weight. This particular one is for the fresh water tank. I have a 21 gallon fresh water tank that's going to go on here. Uh, a gallon of water weighs 8 pounds, let's just call it 20, 20 gallons, so 8 times 20 is what, 160? So that's 160, 168 pounds if it's 21, if it's completely full. So we want to make sure that these boxes have plenty, plenty, plenty of support. The back support on this is in. Now I'm working on the side supports. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my piece that I've cut. I'm going to use that to mark a straight line. Then I'm going to drill three pilot holes. Three. Little glue. And again, is the glue overkill? Maybe. But we are giving the van every opportunity not to shake apart. We're giving the van every opportunity to stay together. Just like that. One, two, three wood screws. squeeze out going along here. That's not a big deal. This part will never be seen again. Once it's installed, you won't even know it's there. The next thing I'm going to do with this box is cut some supports to go down the sides. I want three of them. One, two, and three. No need to measure, we're just going to mark. Off to the miter saw and we'll make our cuts. Alright, we're going to lay these supports in. Use our speed square to make sure that one's square. Draw a line. set these aside and get back to them in a minute. Hi, me again. So I wanted to interrupt again and just explain that as I was putting the supports in, I left a gap between the top of the box and the support. The box is actually going to sit like this and you want to leave yourself a little recessed area 
to put your batteries into or put your uh, fresh water tank into. If you build it clear up at the top, if you can imagine this, and this is your platform, as the van moves and as you go around corners, whatever you have sitting on there is just going to fall off. You put this down a little bit, things may shift, hopefully not, but things may shift, but they won't fall out of the crate. Very, very important that you leave yourself a recessed space up top like this. All right, enough of me. Let's go back to six weeks ago. All right, putting these supports in, you saw where I drew my line earlier. I want my support to go in there like so, so I'm gonna throw some glue on this side and on this side. I like to glue the entire surface. I don't like to just do a line and move on. I like to make sure the whole surface is glued in. Some guys use a brush. I just use my finger. And take your driver, your wood screws, and attach it from the outside. Okay, the last thing I did was put the tops on these crates or boxes. So I've got one for the fresh water tank and I've got one for the batteries. All right, everybody, we're gonna wrap this video up here. Uh, I just wanna leave you with a couple of thoughts. If you're just getting started in your van build, this is a great, great project to do before you get to building any of your other cabinetry that's gonna go in your main living space. The reason is, these don't need to look great. So you can use this opportunity to get to know your tools. If you're going to use pocket holes, um, use this as an opportunity to learn how to do pocket holes. There is a bit of an art to it. I'm going to leave you with a couple of photos with what these crates look like now, painted with both the fresh water tank and the batteries in them. Here they are. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot, as always, for coming along. Hopefully, you've got some time to get out there and get adventuring, keep building, and we'll see you on the next one.